here, I'm going to give you five simple tips for building much better macros. VBA and macros, they are a great tool for automating Excel, but there are a few things, especially the last two tips that you really need to pay attention to. The very first tip is a pretty simple one, but it can be quite nice. Call. Call no more. The way that most of us learn how to call a macro that we've made is to type the word call in front of it and then the name of that macro, new macro. Here's our little macro down here and we have one argument that we must supply it. So we then do open parentheses, we give it the argument and close parentheses. And now we can run it. And we get a little message box, hi. But you don't need to do that. You can just type the name of the macro like this. However, then, so you hit a space, it tells you the arguments you need. You do not need parentheses. So let's type by, and we can comment this guy out, play, and there we go, by. Now, some people are going to say never use call. Some people are going to say always use call. But as you can see, there's a difference here in how you're going to reference the arguments. So I'm going to say just choose one and stick with it. Otherwise, it's going to get more confusing than anything else if you just switch between these two. But now that I've shown you a situation where you don't need the parentheses, let me show you another one where you will. This is tip number two, parentheses for value. So before I go there, notice this is a sub. And we're going to cover sub versus function in just a moment. So parentheses for values. To use a value that is returned from a function, from a procedure, you must enclose its arguments within parentheses. And if you're interested in saving more time automating Excel and learning how to build and manage projects in VBA, then you should check out my full VBA course. It'll take everyone who's a beginner and intermediate level all the way to advanced and expert level where you can go and create your own projects to automate pretty much whatever you need to do in Excel. And I've got a link to that course below this video. And when you take the course, you get full email support from me, so you're never lost. If you have any questions on that, shoot me a message and I'll get back to you. So let's make a little macro here, a value to return as a string and control space to fill that variable name in equals and let's reference this function notice it's a function right here right here return value and let's give it up so notice right here i am referencing this function there is no call but i have to use parentheses now the good thing about this tip is that if you mess this up and you go like this, it's going to give you an error. But if you don't know what's going on, that can be a little bit confusing. So when you want to use a function like this, you have to have parentheses around the arguments. And that's really all there is to this tip. We can run it. And there we go. I'm up. Just a very simple function, nothing really complex going on down here. If it's up, it's I'm up. If it's down, I'm down. Otherwise, I'm here. So now let's move on to the next tip. When to use functions versus subs. And I promise it's going to get a little bit more complex very soon and a lot more helpful. So we've done a sub, we've done a function. And when do we use subs or functions? Because couldn't we just use a function for everything? And couldn't we also kind of use a sub for everything? Well, for the function, you could definitely use that for everything. And in a lot of languages, that's what they do. <laughs> there, there is no sub versus function. And you will read endlessly online about how to build your functions correctly. If it does something, return true or return false, never use a sub. But let me just give you a very basic, simple rule, OK? If you do not need to return a value, use a sub. If you want to or need to return a value, use a function. And why did I say want to return a value instead of only need to return a value? Because sometimes when you finish something, you want to tell the calling procedure, hey, I'm done. That's over. Everything's good. Or, hey, there was an issue in my execution. And you don't necessarily want to rely on the error handlers, which is a 
can be a very complex topic that I cover rather thoroughly in my full VBA course. Well, you just have your function return whatever value you want to say, hey, it's good. Hey, there was an error. Hey, you need to recheck this thing because maybe something happened. And then you can handle that situation in the calling procedure, which is right here, calling macro. A procedure is a macro and a sub, by the way, it's like an umbrella term. And then for the example here, we have my sub. And then we have, let's show you another way to use a function. You can use the function directly like this, because this guy is going to return a value. It's going to return a string, and that string is this right here. So subs don't return values. Functions use them when you want to or need to return a value back to the macro that called it. And now we're getting to the interesting tips. Let's talk about by ref versus by val. <laughs> One of the most annoying things that can cause all sorts of bugs if you're not aware of it. And here I'm going to show you the problem instead of just explaining it because it can be a little confusing. So here we have a regular sub procedure. Its name is do ref. We have a value, input value, a variable right here, as integer. So we have to give it an integer, and then it's going to do something with that variable right here. That's all. It's not going to return a value. It's a sub. Should be pretty simple, right? So let's make a macro to work with that. How about we make this guy my number as integer, and let's set my number equal to 1. And let's go ahead and debug.print that guy so we can make sure it is 1. That's going to output it into the immediate window. We'll get there in just a moment. And now let's go ahead and call do ref. And we're going to pass it my number. And let's go ahead and output debug.print again for my number. So debug.print outputs it in the immediate window. We can hit control G to go to the immediate window or we can go to a view, immediate window. And this allows us to check our output. So where it says debug.print, it's going to send something down here. So let us see what happens. We are going to run it. And look what we have there, one and a five. How the hell did we get five? There's no debug.print down here. We have debug.print here, which should be one, of course. Then we call a procedure. It does something. Then we output the value of our variable again. And it has changed to five because we set this to five down here. Note the variable names aren't the same. It doesn't matter. The reason this happened is because by default, it is passed by reference. When it's passed by reference, if you change its value down here, it's going to change the value in the calling procedure. In trying to debug your code, if you're not aware of this, because it's not a normal thing in a lot of programming languages, that can be mental torture. So we have a solution, thankfully, and that is called by val. So instead of passing it by reference, we pass it by val. And it's very easy to do that. We can make another procedure down here, do val. And actually, why don't I just copy all of this instead of typing it? and just change the name. And all we have to do is one thing, type by val right here. That is it. Now there are more ways to do this that I show you in my full VBA course, some of them a little bit more involved, but helpful in certain situations. But I'm not gonna cover that here. Let's just make it a simple video with five tips. If you wanna learn more about that, look to the link below this video and check out my full VBA course. But now let's go ahead and change do ref to do val. My number. Let's clear this guy out. Run this again. One, one. It doesn't matter that we changed it down here. It had no effect on the values in the calling procedure. Now, once again, if you look online at what you should do, you're going to see a lot of recommendations for one way or another way, or, hey, you should know that this is by reference, so you shouldn't have any errors in your code. But let's be honest, we can all be tired. We can all have to meet deadlines. We can all forget that this crazy little language VBA does this. 
So just put by val down here in front of your variables to make it more difficult to mess things up. And if you've been relying on this feature to change values in the calling procedure, well, that can make life very confusing when you want to debug or maintain your code. So what I'd suggest is turn this guy into a function and have it return a value or an array of values, a really great thing I show you in my full VBA course. And then you can very easily track and find how things are changing in your code, when they're changing and why they're changing. So the values, as opposed to changing them deep, deep, deep in some sub somewhere. So with a function, you'll know this guy is supposed to return a value and you can see when your values have been changed and why a little bit more clearly. And now let's talk about another gotcha in VBA. The last tip of the video, stop functions. Returning a value to a function, to a sub, to a procedure, does not actually stop the function that you called from continuing to run. So remember that a function should return a value. And you may think, hey, when I return the value, it's done, right? Because that's how it works in other languages. But here, it's not the case. So here we've got our base macro setup. We have a sub to call our function. We have a function. It should return true or false. If I pass it a value that is greater than 5, it's going to return true. If I do not, it's going to do whatever else it wants to do. It's going to get to the end of the function, and then it's going to return false. Let us change this from 4 to 6. So it should just return true. Let's go back to the immediate window, control G, because we're using debug.print. I'll put it here instead of a message box. And we will click in here, hit play. And we get false. Why do we get false? Shouldn't we get true? <laughs> well, it's because once it gets here, it doesn't stop running. Watch this. Debug.print, I'm here. And let's do another debug.print. And let's go now. I'm here. We'll run it again. I'm here. Now I'm here. False. So we get in here. It sets exit early to true, runs this code, but it's not done. It has more code to run. So we go to the debug print here, and then we reset exit early back to false. And then we're done. Remember this, it's very important. The moment that you want to return a value from your function before the end of that function, input exit function. Now we can retry this. Click in here, hit play, and we get the correct output. This one annoys me even more than by ref versus by val, because if you've come from other languages, you just expect that when you set this guy to a value, when you return a value, it's just going to exit the function, but it doesn't. Don't forget your exit function. However, at the end, you do not need an exit function because there's nothing between this and end function. But if it makes it easier for you, just put exit function after every instance where you're going to return a value, even the end, because sometimes it can be more confusing to remember every single little caveat, right? And an extra exit function down here is not really going to hurt anything. So exit function is your friend. And that is the last tip for this video. VBA and macros can make your life so much easier. Yes, you're going to have to do a little debugging. Yes, you're going to have to work through some issues here and there. But that's why I have a full VBA course that covers all of these topics here and so, so, so much more to make your life much easier when automating Excel. And if you're ever stuck on anything in the course or you don't understand why something happens or how it works like this or what's going on, you have a direct line of support with me where you can shoot me an email and I'll get back to you and explain exactly what's going on so you're never lost. That's all for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can get all of my new tutorials.